So there is a time I remember the pediatrician who was in charge of the baby told me, it's called Dr. Rosalind Ochen, told me, she told me, uh, she came, she actually came and told me two, two of the quadruplets have a problem, but just a slight problem, it's a normal problem. You know the way they explain to you, just a normal problem, it happens to almost all babies born premature. And I was like, what is the problem? They, they have something called a mama, you know, like... Um, a heart mama. Something, it's like a hole, you know. They don't want to say it's a hole in the heart. You know, beating around the bush. Hey, that was now another stressor. You know, when you hear a baby has a hole or someone has a hole in the heart, it's really a big issue. So there was this mama who, was in, who had stayed in Aga Khan for four months with the baby. She got a baby at six months. The baby came out six months and the baby was uh, 500 and something, five, 80 grams. So that mama became my source of strength. She actually became my prayer partner. We used to pray together. She told me, a mama is something very normal. Even my baby head, you know, my baby was, at least your babies are, you know, my, I, the, big, the biggest were 1.6. 1. 1. Two, Lara and Liana, 1.6 kg. Libby was 1.5 and Lisa was 1.2. She told me, you know, my what? My baby was 580 grams. Yours are one kg and above. And they are quadruplets. Remember, mine was one? Yes. You are a very strong woman. You've done well. She told me, my baby's now okay. We are almost getting. She got discharged like in two weeks after I got my babies. You know, preemie babies have a lot of complications. Because now one was a... Uh, Hemoglobin had very low, hemoglobin level was very low. She had to, Liana had to blood transfused and the two, remember, had um, holes in their hearts. And then there was, a, I know, low sugars, low salt, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of complications. And three now had jaundice. They had to go through phototherapy. Phototherapy for like two weeks. On the other hand, the babies have these complications. The bills are really escalating. escalating. Actually, in Aga Khan, per day, per baby per day, ICU is 35,000 per baby. Now ours was 35 times 4. That is for the ICU. There was medication. They were, they were given this injection for maturing lungs. Then each child was given two injections, and an injection is 8,000. So the bills were going out. And remember, we had to get, they had to get a cardiologist for us. They said they don't have a cardiologist. They, ha they don't have a resident cardiologist. And you know, cardiologists are very expensive. So the bills were going up. So I think my husband got stressed now. You know, you know, thinking about now, how we, are we going? Remember, my mother-in-law is also in another hospital, very critical condition, very critical. She was very sick. The babies are here, and the hospital were equally big, expensive hospitals. But you know, we had to do that because we had to save life. We, we really said we will do what it takes. So at long last, after one month. Three babies were taken to HDU. They were now stable. Three babies were. And we thanked God because HDU was now 15,000 each per baby per day. And the me medications involved were, were less. Now it was all about adding weight. At some point, we wanted to transfer the babies to Kenyatta. Wanted, because now it was like 5 million by then. By after, the, after one month, it was like five million. So we were like, no, we have to transfer the babies to Kenyatta because at this point, we will not manage. So we talked to the doctors and they were like, no, you know, these babies were born here and in case of anything, we will be held responsible. We are not transferring the babies, they'll be here. So we were like, okay, we didn't know what to do. I think my husband really got stressed. You know you have to pay, you have to pay kidogo kidogo. You, you don't really have to wait, you should be paying. So there was so much pressure with the bills, he got stressed. On the process, by the time we were getting out, it was something to do with seven million. But NHIF was paying for us um, 
NHIF paid over half a million because it was paying for private hospitals, it pays 4,000 per day. So it is 4,000 per baby. And I also stayed in, I stayed in hospital for three weeks because um, the pediatrician who was taking care of my babies uh, wanted me to express milk. And you know, going home, expressing you, I was into so much pressure. Like, I used to get these calls from from HDU. The babies, the babies have milk like for two hours. In the next two hours, the babies do not have milk. And the doctor has said they are not being given. They will not be given formula. Like, if uh, my milk will help them, like survive, it is better. So after we left the hospital, final bill now came to seven million. Yeah, of course the bill was cleared now, it was cash, but um, you know, it was like all the savings, all the property sold, like everything, you know, everything. When we went home, my husband told me uh, my account has only 12,000, so I don't know how we will survive. You know, I thought he's joking. I've, I, I had never seen him broke, like, you know. So it was really tough, taking care of them. Did I family did, members come in? Yeah, my sister was there. Yeah, my sister already had moved in. And of course, I had, now we had two, uh, two house girls now. But the house girls also, I think, you know, they were staying like two days, three days, they leave. Two days, three days, someone, you send someone to the shop, she disappears. So it was crazy. I didn't even know how to mix formula. You know, I did not ask questions. I was not prepared at all. At first, we were u they, were, they were using one tin a day. But when they turned f four months, they started two tins a day. So there was another problem. One of my quadruplets, the, the big one, Lara, had a problem. She used to vomit anytime you feed her. So she was on no Nexium treatment. So she could choke easily. Like you feed her and then all of a sudden the milk is coming from the, the nose. So I took it as my, my husband was trying to help, but anytime he feeds a baby, they are choking. My sister, I was actually quarreling them, please don't feed them. I told them, don't feed, it's now me alone to feed them. Now the babies, they had to be there holding the babies, crying to wait for me, finish this and then go to the next one. The next and one. You or? I think I got so I I got so stressed I couldn't even breast, breastfeed. You know they actually the babies could not even they they is latching they is what to call latching they could not even latch well they were not able you know they're still tiny they were two two week, two kg they are just click two kg they could not even you know they've not learned how to breastfeed. Well, you know, for a baby to breastfeed well, it should be around 2.5 and above. They were only two, so they could not even breastfeed well. It was like I'm choking them, so I had to bottle feed them. Though I was from the hospital, I was told to do cup, cup, cup and spoon is is the best. But I think I I didn't know. You know, they were too tiny, so I just had to go on my way. And then now we were getting broke, my goodness. Now we were so broke, like we don't even have money for food. You know, to what <laughs> it was getting crazy. And of course, people started talking. Oh, they went to Agakan to throw money. Oh, they are back, they are broke. You know, people will always talk. When you are rich, they will talk. When you are poor, they will talk. When you are smart, they will talk. When you are not smart, they will talk. So, you know, it was getting, no, my husband was like, no, I have to go back to work because now I'm not working, I don't have a salary, he doesn't have a salary. We have exhausted all our savings and anything that was to be sold. We don't, we absolutely depending on people now. He has to go to work. Like the day he was to travel, like the following day, my, ma my, my mother-in-law, the mom passed on. It was now double tragedy. My mother passed on, now he couldn't travel. He had to wait for um, for like he was, she was buried after three weeks, because the daughters were away, my sister and those were away, and they they didn't come. They came after three weeks, so that is when she was buried. So he had to wait. He couldn't have gone. So he was that, just there, broke. You know, depending on like maybe a friend. You know, in a couple of weeks he went back to work, 
and I was now here all alone now with the babies. Now I had to face the another reality like I'm all alone with the baby is out of the country for work. He told me, you know what? He gave me two thousand. He told me I have nine thousand. Went and changed to dollars. Gave me two thousand. He told me when I go there, I will, I will ask for a friend to give me money. I send you. So as time went by, um, because of you know working and sending money, I think my husband in the process. You know, he's a, he's a quiet person. He's an introvert, a real introvert. He doesn't share his problems. He doesn't, he doesn't, he rarely socialize. He ran into depression. He ran into depression. The next minute I'm, I was being told is I was called from the hospital where he was admitted in the US. Like, he has heart issues. So he had to go through a lesser, you know the lesser surgery, lesser surgery. There was, I think there was a vein going, there was some vein which was not, like oxygen, there was some parts of the heart where uh, oxygen was not going through. So it was really risky. So he had to go through a surgery. Where he was working, he, hasn't, he, he had not worked for six months. So they covered like 20%. The surgery took almost six million and he was forced to pay the, he was Pay, he paid, he was told to pay four million. Remember, he, he has no, he's, he, he had not even started saving. So the, the, the company was working, he had not worked for six months. So that was actually, it was like a rule. That was the, the agreement. They could not cover him fully. So he had a, a bill, of, a debt of four million to pay. Of course, he got out of hospital and he was told to he was also put on some bed rest for six months. He stayed home for one month. You know, now this one month, of course he was being paid, but um, now he's not going to work. So he was told, no, he, t he was told not to go back to work, but he told me, no, I have to go back to work. But the company could not allow him work because they don't want to be held responsible. So he had to look for another job. He had not finished the bed rest. He looked for another job in a different company. You know, oh, he went there all looking okay. You know, he's not okay, but he had to lie. He's, oh, he's okay because he has to work. We are so broke. You know, I'm with five babies, house girls. You know, we have bills to pay. To pay. It was crazy. So after working for like two months, he was back to hospital again. You know, he was now sick. He was, they had issues again. You know, he did not adhere to the bed rest he was given. So there was damage to the heart again. At this point, I even thought I would lose him. I got stressed also. But so mostly me, I used to survive on, you know, there is this online competition, Facebook competition. My friends used to tag me, there's a competition, someone is supposed to win diapers like for six months. For three months, I got actively involved in those competitions. Actually, there was a competition in Jumia, and I, w I won it. I was given one year supply of diapers, but now one year supply is for one baby. That is what they do. It's w not for four babies, but at least it is something. It's something. I got another competition for... This was, uh, this was Pampers, and then I got another competition for Happy Nappy. I won it for three months supply. Though for one baby, another one was can baby, I won it, you know. Now, you know, I was now trying to, 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 to help the situation, you know, by any, means by any means, you know. Now the house girls, I thought of using nappies, but imagine the house girls were not, even with, with, with diapers, the house girls were not still staying, you know, and I needed help. You know, gone are the days when you could get relatives just come and stay in your house. There were no relatives like everyone is busy, people are working, people are, people are in their, fa they, they have families. So my husband was in hospital. Actually in the process he lost the, the other job now, the second company. You know the people he knew, the, the friends from Kenya, told him no, you have to adhere to this bed rest. Because if anything happens to you, what happens to your, your family? So he had to stay for a whole year out of work, completely out of work. Now the whole year, 
how we were surviving, I think it's by God's grace, how we were paying rent, you know. People used to send me money like, oh, this is 5,000, buy diapers, 10,000, buy what, you know. That is how I used to survive. I was actually paying the bills by myself for one year. Without working. Yes, without working. And also him, he used to, he used to sometimes borrow from friends over there, borrow, borrow money, you know, send me. That is how we survived for a whole year. Was his health getting better? Was it getting better? Yes, because now I told him to relax. People talk to him, he has to relax. But, you know, of course he wasn't relaxed. He wasn't, and he couldn't even come home. He couldn't come home because he cannot come home he doesn't, without money, you know. So uh, I remember I told him, I suggested to him, I told him now we have to go to up country. I don't mind going back to up country because now you are not working, I'm not working. You know rent, we could go like for three months, we've not paid rent, but our landlord was very understanding. You know, I told him we have to go back to up country. And he was like, no. I will keep borrowing money here, sending you, you will not go. And now he was like, what about Lana? Lana is our firstborn. What about Lana? When he found out that I'm really giving up, you know, he now started, I think, waking up and being strong for me and telling me, no, I have to fight. I'm almost going back to work. Relax, everything will be fine. And remember, the babies were also getting sick. They were getting sick. Remember, they are getting sick. Now we could not even afford any hospital. Now the only hospital we could afford is any hospital, any free, you know. Because now consultation is four times. Consultation four times, drugs buy four times. We could not even, no, those hospitals we used to visit, we could no longer go. So it was, I used to go, there's some hospital. <coughs> I used to, we moved to Kawangware. There's another hospital called Minawamumbi. It is owned by the, the blood, uh, Precious Blood. You know Precious Blood, uh, the school? The, the sisters have a, a kind of a dispensary to help the community. That is where someone introduced me to that hospital. By then I, we had moved to Kawangware. We were staying there, so I used to go to that hospital. Consultation was like 50 bob per child. You know, it was manageable. By the way, they have very good medication. Uh, apart from, they don't have facilities, but you know, their, med their medicines are original and they are cheap, you know. And sometimes I used to tell them, the, the, the sister in charge, sister me today, I don't even have consultation. <laughs> and she could just laugh and just go and see the doctor, you see. Was, was Lana still in school? Lana was still in school and uh, her school fees, you know, okay, when I was a staff, we never used to pay school fees because you know, I was a staff. So we started paying school fees, but now arrears. But I think even the school also was supportive. They didn't send her away. We had a lot of arrears. They didn't send her away. She was just going to school. Finally, my husband was now fully healed. He actually told me, I feel better. I feel like a new car, you know, the new engine. Now we have to face this. I have to go back to work, now he went back to work. He got another job, you know, getting a job in the US is not as hard as here. He went back to work. And, um, he's, been, he's been working for like, let's say six months now. And also me, I was really looking for a job, but for me it was a bit of a challenge, you know. You know, here in Kenya, when you are out of work for a very long time, most companies or institutions, they think that you're not productive, you will not perform, especially schools. You know, I'm a teacher. I teach, I'm a high school teacher, I teach geography in Kiswahili. So, you know, said books had already changed, a lot has happened, you know, I'm out of work. You know, teaching is also a learning process. So if you are out of work, it means you are not, you will not perform, you are not so, you, are not, you will not be effective as someone. So I could go for interviews, I'm not taken simply because I've been out of. So this gap, they look at my CV, I have like three years home. So one time, um, actually a friend, I have a friend, a friend told me that they, they, they needed a Kiswahili teacher in some school. So I went for an interview, I was, not, I was not judged. Actually the principal and the deputy are, they are, um, 
their ladies. And it happened that the deputy is a mother of twins. <laughs> added advantage. <laughs> so added advantage. And the fact that they were me women, I think they, they, understood, they understood me. I told them I know I've been home for two and a half years, but trust me, I will prove myself. <laughs> give me a chance. I will prove myself. I will not. They, yeah, they gave me a chance. And I was so grateful. So I'm still proving myself. Yes. So yeah, thank you so much. So and now the babies are all grown. They're all healthy. They're all healthy. Actually, nowadays they never get sick. Apart from Libby, who fell two weeks ago, like almost three weeks ago, she, the, she's very hyper, very, very hyper. She's the boy I never had. <laughs> <laughs> she can climb everywhere. Like now, she fell from the TV stand, but she fell on her elbow. She was here, the fracture. So they never really get sick as and such. Make some no, um, the milestones were different. Actually, Liana, Liana, Liana is uh, one of the quad, the quad who had uh, a mama, a heart mama. Actually, her, my, her milestones were a bit fast, and Lara and Libby, but Lisa was a bit, you know, Lisa walked at the age of one year and six months. That is when she was able, at one year she could not even see it. And uh, later, that is when I noticed she has a problem. Like, I think her left side was affected. She's going through therapy. I used to take her to Mbagadi Hospital. She goes through, th through therapy. Once in a week, once in a week, that is when now she, at least she started. She started walking after the therapy. The therapy was really helpful. And the characters completely different? From they, the they have different characters, completely different, completely different. Like now, Lara is, um, Lara is an introvert, like, like my husband, like the dad. Lara is, an, Lara, Lara can, like a whole day, Lara will not even laugh. But at least the other ones are really pushing her. So sometimes when she's, there was a time, actually they could play three of them. Libby, Liana and Lisa and Lara just seated at the corner. Sometimes they could even beat her. You could find them surrounding, beating her because she's not joining them, you know. So, but with time, I think nowadays I can see, but they, they are like two, two pairs. They love each other. You know, they are two sets of identicals. Lara and Liana, they are friends. Libby and Lisa, you can see them defending each other. <laughs> so Lara is an introvert and she loves phones. She, she can come to you if she sees you with a phone. Gadgets, she loves gadgets. Liana is, we call her ambulance. Liana will never sit down for even two minutes. She's all over, like, you know, she, and she walks so fast. And most of the, the time she likes la running, even in the house. Um, and she's somehow, she has some leadership qualities. Because when she, they are fighting, if she see them fighting, she will stop them, yeah? Like she'll stop them and she'll come tell me, Mama, she will point at me like, they are fighting, are you seeing they are fighting? <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop them. Yeah, that is Liana. And then now Libby. Libby loves TV, my goodness. I think Libby knows all the songs. Even if the words cannot come out, she knows. I think one day she'll be a musician, she can sing. She loves TV, she can be here all alone watching. And she's hyper, she can climb even, like, anywhere. Lisa, Lisa, we call her Simba, she's a real bully. <laughs> she can beat all of them, she's the smallest, but she can beat all of them. Does your firstborn enjoy being the big sister? Uh, my, the firstborn enjoys being the sister. We thought she would not like them, but she, she really loves them. She loves them, She's very, she had to be responsible because I could not keep up following homework. You know, 844 homework, the way it can be crazy. Homework every day, like I have to sign the diary, I have to check the work, whether it's done or not. It's like three, three subjects, I couldn't. I told her, you know what, you have to make sure you do your homework. She just does her homework from school, she, she takes a shower. No one is telling her what to do because we are busy. Like, everyone is busy. She, she, became she became responsible. She takes a shower. She does her homework. She's actually a deputy pre <laughs> parent. <laughs> and she loves her sister so much. But sometimes, 
sometimes she doesn't feel she feels like they came and life has changed sometimes she feels life has changed because of them sometimes she tells me there's a time she told me mommy i don't think us getting four babies were, uh, was a good idea <laughs> i was like why nowadays we never go for bouncing castle even church you know we used to go to church but you know because of the house help you know house help i have two house helps one goes off saturday another sunday so when we used we go we are catholics when we go to church it means no one is going for an off maybe after church sometimes we leave church late you know so i noticed a very high turnover of house help because everyone wants to go off on sunday unless i get a pair which where one once accepts going for an off on a Saturday, that is okay. Yeah. Mm. What advice would you give to, to parents who are expecting multiples? What to do you tell them? What I would like uh, advise them is um, they have to do a lot of research. They have to do a lot of research. They should not take any anything for granted, any pain. They should not take any pain for granted. They have to consult, talk to people. Don't be an introvert. Talk to other mothers. Look for multiple fellow multiple moms. Talk to them. You know, go to hospital. Actually, I advise all mothers, even mothers expecting singleton. Anytime you are pregnant, like the first test, you are pregnant. Even if you are four weeks, three weeks start your antenatal clinics because earlier antenatal clinics saved me because if I could have waited you know sometimes you can wait for six months you know I could have gotten a miscarriage because uh, I didn't have a stitch and you know I also had medication to hold the pregnancy you know, I really took the necessary and also God above you know you have to pray people have to pray for you you have to trust in God that you will make it Thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome, welcome. <laughs>